I automate a lot of fitness businesses and I use Go High Level to do it. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do it specifically for fitness coaches. So there's four major things that I do for fitness businesses inside of Go High Level when they come to me and want to use it as their CRM. So the first thing is lead management. Second is uh, HVCO automations. Third is CRMs and fourth is calendar builds. Now this video is going to be very informal. I'm going to do little to no editing because I want to walk you through the exact steps of how I set these up. So this is probably going to be three quarters of it and the rest is just personalized to the specific person and what they want in terms of like email marketing and all that kind of thing. But this kind of doesn't change. So I have a snapshot for this, but I thought it would be valuable for me to show you setting it up without a snapshot. So let's get underway and we're going to start with a pipeline. So if you don't know what a pipeline is, it's just a place for you to see all of your leads uh, in your pipeline. So you can visualize what it looks like for your business. Uh, it's really good to actually track everything. So we're going to go into opportunities on the left-hand side. We're going to go up to the top left-hand side and click pipelines and create a new pipeline. We're going to call it uh, sales pipeline. Cool. And then stage name, we're going to go inquired and then we're going to go booked and uh, close deal and no sale. And then HV, uh, HVCO1. I'll get into what HVCOs are in a second, but I want to uh, just show you what this looks like before we get into that. So this is the pipeline. If we have a look here. Let it reload, maybe. Da -da 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 -da. Whilst it's loading, a HVCO stands for high value content offering. So think lead magnet, think uh, anything that someone can download in order in, in, in exchange for your details. So ignore that. So we've got our CRM here. So if we create an opportunity and we just use my details, here we go. Uh, phone number is valid, thank you and type in the details and we're going to put me in the inquired stage. Why isn't it? Let me do this. There we go. Create contact. So this will all be automated, but it is what well, is once plus six. One. Okay. Oop. Plus six one. Um, this is my phone number. Don't call me. If you do, I'll have to get a new one and I don't want to do that. All right, cool. So we've got all the things here. We press update. And if we refresh this, we should come up in inquired. This message is so annoying. And we're here in inquired. So now you can move this along depending on where the person is at in your sales pipeline. So if you've inquired, if someone's inquired and then you've called them and managed to get them on a, a call, you just move them into booked uh, and then they stay there until you have your sales call with them. So you have them in the sales call, um, just say they sign up, you move them across to close deal or no sale depending on, on how you went. People like to have this in like the CRM. It can be really like really complicated with a bunch of different steps. For me, I found the better way to do it is to only have a few stages in there unless you have like a super complicated sales process. But for most fitness coaches, it is better if they just go inquired, booked, closed deal, no sale. Um, and then they can go from here. So uh, a HVCO, high value content offering. So just say, for example, a lot of coaches have like calorie calculators or like free trading programs or whatever it is. That puts... Um, that, that will put the lead in here. So the reason that I do that for coaches is because I think they should treat people who download their lead magnet and their assets as leads. Um, they've said they're willing to exchange their details. They've got the problem. They've kind of put their hand up uh, to potentially be contacted and they should be contacting these as if they were standard leads. So send them a message, um, ask them if they use the program, ask them if they had um, any questions, whatever it might be, with the goal of getting them into a booked call. So when we are looking at the actual CRM itself, this will be automated. So whatever the person has in terms of their 
um, lead capture, whether they have a type form, whether they have a jot form, whether they've got a form inside Go High Level, it will populate here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up a basic form that someone can just put on a website um, or even like a put it in like a link tree or whatever. Uh, just embed the form so they can start collecting leads. So you go into sites and then forms. And now Go High Level has this new form builder where on the left-hand side here, you've got your elements. So the different things that can go in the form. And then on your right-hand side over here, you can see all of the different, um, what's it called? The different uh, customization you can do the field. So we're just going to keep it real simple. We're going to go full name, date of birth, and we're going to say phone number. And then we will go a button will be in here somewhere button cool submit so you can just shuffle these around now it looks kind of ugly but i always change the buttons to full width buttons and add some uh corner radius to it so 20 so it, ma it makes it look a little bit nicer and then if we just change this to a, a less harsh color <laughs> um that'll do and we'll rename it to submit cool and if we just press save in a second. I want to label this and I always forget to do this. So I'm just going to make note of it now. Once you've finished creating your form, go into options and label this the type of form that it is. So this is a lead capture form. And we're just going to press save. Cool. Saved. Wait for it. All right. Now we're going to go back. So now that we've got our form, we need the automation to kick off when it actually is filled out. So on the left-hand side, we're going to go into automation. So say you have like a link tree and you want to be able to accept leads from your Instagram, for example, you can put this in there. So we're going to open up start from scratch. I don't use any of the recipes. I feel like they, I think I used them once when I first started, but they just are not really fit for my use case. So cool. So we've opened up the automation uh, workflow builder. I'm going to give it a name straight away is Lee. I always number them. So the first stage that someone can interact with a business is um, number one for me, lead capture automation. Cool. And we need to have a trigger. So a trigger is the start of the sequence. And that is going to be the form when it's filled out and someone hits submit. That is our trigger. So our new workflow trigger is going to be form submitted. So we're going to type in form and then click form submitted. And we are going to add filter on here because we need to tell it which form to actually uh, trigger this when the form's filled out. Now, it's only we've, we've only got one right now, but when you have multiple forms, it makes a difference. So form submitted, <clears throat> and then we're going to press the plus, and we're going to type in uh, opportunity. So create or update opportunity. So this is where you are putting them into the sales pipeline. So you've got create or update opportunity in pipeline, sales pipeline, and the pipeline stage is exactly what they've done, which is inquired and the opportunity name. If we click on this little tag over here, it's going to bring up custom values. Now a custom value is literally just like a placeholder that when someone fills out a form, it will input their data into the placeholder so that you can start to reference that placeholder and this instance of the automation where it knows it's running off that contact, it will plug in their details. So for example, opportunity name, we're going to go in contact and then contact full name. Don't get mistaken with contact and user. The user is you or whoever is using Go High Level. Uh, contact is the person who's filled it out. So contact, name, and then in opportunity source, so that's just the location of where it came from. I'm just going to type in lead capture. It's good to track um, where your leads come from as well. So that's good. And lead value, you can put in whatever cost that you associate with signing a new client. So say, for example, you do hire a ticket and you sign people for 12 weeks at a time. You can put in 2000 or whatever you really do. So we're going to press save. Now that's just going to add a stage here. Now that is a very simple way to get people into your pipeline, but we want to talk to people as soon as they inquire. So we're going to wait one minute or 0.5 of a minute before we message them. So it's not too instantaneous. So what I've done there is I've added a wait step. So that is just delaying on how quickly it moves forward. So if you just saw this ha action live, 
when someone fills out the form, it, it creates the opportunity and then it waits there for 0.5 of a minute. Then it will run the next step. So we've run the next step uh, now and that's going to be message. So we're going to send an SMS. Because we captured their phone number, we're able to SMS them. And it's just going to be like, hey, and then their name. So contact. So we say, hey, oops, none. And then we get custom values and then uh, full name. Hey, contact name, Matt here from the fitness company. Just reaching out to book a consultation with you. Chat soon, Matt. Now, we will actually put in a uh, placeholder here for calendar link. So that's just a, a reminder for me for when we come back to it, that we need to be able to send that calendar link when people actually sign up. So we'll go through that next, but I will just save this here. So this is a very simple automation that takes care of your lead flow at the very beginning. So you've set this up. Now, there's a bunch of things that you can go into with this as in like reminders and um, all of that kind of thing to prompt people to get actually on the phone. So I normally do a combination of SMS and email um, in each foul swoop. So it would be wait, SMS, email, wait five minutes. If they haven't booked in SMS, email, wait five minutes or more like an hour um, to get them to actually book in. And once they actually do book in, that automation will take them out of this workflow. So I'll show you what that looks like now. So moving along in our CRM. So now that we've got a way to get people into opportunities, when someone fills out the form, they will come into here. But once we've sent them the uh, booking link and they've booked in a call, we want this to automatically move them into booked. So we can do this stage before actually creating the calendar, um, but I need to do that after this. So we'll do this first. So if we create a um, new workflow, so create workflow and we start from scratch again. I've never really speed run setting up this before, so this is probably good. So two is appointment booked, right? Now what we can do, this will remember, so when someone books an appointment, it will know who's booked the appointment, right? Because it brings up their kind of profile internally in Go High Level, uh, and it will move them through, so it won't get, ever get confused, which is great. So add a new workflow trigger, and we're going to type in book, well, customer booked appointment. We're going to select that. We're going to add the filter uh, in calendar and that is going to be our calendar here. But for the meantime, I'm just going to leave this blank. So when we've created that calendar, uh, it will be there. So that if you have multiple salespeople or multiple coaches, uh, you can say when booked in Matt's um, calendar, then do something. Or when it's booked in Jess's calendar, do something. So that's the first step. The next step is going to be remove from workflows. Because what's going to happen is we don't want them to get a barrage of messages when they've already booked in a call. So if when you inquire, you have follow-ups that says, hey, you can see you haven't booked in a call. Hey, just wondering if you're still interested, that kind of thing. You don't want them to be sent to your prospect if they have already booked the call. It looks very unprofessional. So we're going to remove from all workflows and we're going to uncheck include current workflow because... They are not in the uh, workflow. We don't we don't want them to kick them out of the workflow we're adding them into. So first and foremost, we want to confirm their booking. So we say, yo, uh, just got your booking confirmation. Here's the link, right? And now you're going to go custom values again, and it will know the actual appointment for... Um, the appointment meeting location. So you've set it up to Zoom. I'll show you that in a minute. So we're just going to have meeting location here at this time. Oops. This time. I hope I don't miss anything when I'm doing this because I know I'm going through it quick. But if we go start date and time. So here's the link at this time. And we're going to save action. And we're going to keep it super simple. We're just going to set, set it for that now. Again, in this stage, you would have multiple follow-ups with client testimonials and different emails talking about you, uh, warming your prospect up so when they get on the phone call, um, you're quite familiar with, uh, they're quite familiar with you. Cool. 
Make sure we're still recording. Great. So the next step is we are going to create a calendar. On the left-hand side, we select calendar and we ignore and get out of that. And we are going to go into calendar settings. and click new calendar. Now, oh, they've released collective bookings. That's new. Schedule meetings with multiple team members. That's great. Cool. Interesting. Um, it's new. All right, we're just going to go round robin. Now, the reason I use round robin is because it just looks better in the setup. So I just do it this way. Don't hate me. So calendar name, Matt's calendar. Select team members. We've got no team members created just yet, but... We're going to probably have to do that first. Yeah, cool. All right, backtrack for a second. Pause. We're going to go back into, um, we're going to go to the very home screen. We need to create a user. <clears throat> Usually if you sign up with Go High Level, it will create the user for you straight away. But if you have an agency level like I do, I'm going to have to need to create this, this first. So I'm going to go my staff, add employee, user info, um, Matt, Lamborn. Cool. Info uh, plus 50 at lambourne.com. Oh, there's an E in my name. Um, if you don't know, if you write your email and then like, so my email is info at mattlambourne.com. It's one of my emails. So if I write plus 50, it will create another email account on this platform, but still send the email to info at mattlambourne.com. So if you have multiple accounts for things and you have like different emails for it every time, you can just to use the same one, but like plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. Um, and the password, we are just going to go uh, pass, password, one, two, three, four, exclamation mark. I've never used that password before in my life. So if you try and shank me, don't. All right, there we go. So now we go back to calendars on the left-hand side here. And we go new calendar. And we press uh, round robin, so select. And we're going to go Matt Calendar. Please select team member, Matt Lamborn. There we go. The calendar URL, this isn't going to matter too much because of the reason I show you in, in a moment. Um, but we will just keep it standard for now. Press confirm. So slug is going to be Matt Cal. Oh, Matt Booking Link. Cool. And then press confirm. Sweet. So we got our details there. That's fine. I'm getting a phone call. No, we can go away. <laughs> Whoops. Um, are we still recording? Yep, we're good. All right, sweet. So Matt Calendar, and we can go in here and edit this if we need to. We can change the availability. Uh, we can change the form that's being used. Right now, it doesn't really matter uh, because we just want it to be able to take bookings and you can tailor it to your needs as needed um but in this example it's not needed so great cool so if we go back to our automation and go back to our appointment booked we can now select the calendar that we just created so a customer booked appointment and we are going to say add filter in calendar map calendar save trigger now there's a couple of things that you will need to do if you are taking your sales calls on zoom so this is super important because you want to be able to have people's information reflected um like their availability from their calendar and all that kind of thing so what you're going to do you're going to go into settings and then we're going to go to my staff and then i'm going to press edit on matt lamborn and if we go to user calendar configuration we are going to need to add in their the google uh, or outlook details here now when um, I log in, I'll be able to do that. So that's really important that you connect that first. And then when you've connected that, you can go back into calendars and then you can open up map calendar and press edit. And then in location, so down here, if you scroll down to the bottom, you might not see it straight away, but you'll see that there's different options to meet. So it most of the time is gonna be Zoom or it might be in person, but yes, Zoom hasn't been connected. And then once you've selected Zoom, it will generate the meeting link for you and send it in your confirmation email. So that's the, the automation that we sent up, set up. So now 
when someone gets that um, link to book in, it will move them along in the opportunities list, right? So from inquired to booked. Now, I have a specific way I set up calendars for coaches. I like to have them branded and the standard um, coaching, <laughs> the standard calendar on Go High Level looks pretty ugly. So this is what I do. If I have uh, created them a funnel or a website or whatever, um, I will create a new funnel for their calendar. I will purchase a domain for them, which is like an abbreviation of their business name. So if, if my old coaching company was Coach Matt Lamborn, um, my uh, abbreviated name might be Coach ML, right? Coach ML. And then I would have the calendar sit at this domain. Uh, if you don't know how to connect a domain, I will go through that in a later later stage, but um, it is pretty straightforward. Uh, if you want a cheap place to buy domains, you should buy them from Namecheap. Not affiliated, just they're nowhere comes cheap, cheaper. Cool. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into sites and then new funnel. Name for your awesome funnel. Calen calendar. Cool. Create. Now, what I do is super simple, right? I will obviously during my onboarding, I ask the coach to send me their details. So I'll get them to send me their um, logo, their branding, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so I can add it in here. So Matt Calendar, Matt Booking Link. Cool. And then we're going to create funnel step. And we're just going to create it from blank. Now, it's super simple what I do. Uh, depending on their branding, I would keep it, the web page tailored to them. Now, the thing is with um, the Go High Level Calendar widget, it is white for the most part. So it would be better if you could have white background and a um, just a logo at the top. So what I do is this is the Go High Level Funnel Builder uh, on the left hand on, on the right hand side rather. We need to add in a full width um, container. So when it's talking about um, full width, wide, medium, or small. It's how much space it takes up on the actual web page. So we're going to go full width container. So you've got your container first, and then you need to add a row inside to be able to put stuff inside of it. So one uh, row to then add in one column. So this is just one block inside of a container. So if you have a container, you've got a block inside of it. And now I can add my elements into it. And an element is a headline, a subheadline, a form, a button, uh, a calendar, a widget, whatever it is. For coaches, I always do an image at the top. So then I put in um, their logo. For the meantime, I'm just going to leave it blank so I can show you the whole thing. Then I click on plus down the bottom here. Now, if I clicked on plus uh, around this container, it will create another container for me to put stuff inside. Um, for the calendar, it doesn't really matter too much. But if you were building a funnel, uh, it would matter. So because you would have branding and all that kind of stuff. But for this one, I'm just going to click on the blue one here. I think it's blue and colorblind. And then I'm press one column. And then I click on calendar in here. And then I select map calendar. And then I press save. And now they've got their little booking page. Now, this will be linked to the domain. Once you've linked it to the domain, they will have their own web page where it has their logo and their calendar. I think it just looks better than sending a random calendar or having a calendar embedded into the website. Um, and they don't have to use something like Calendly, but they get the function of Calendly. So we just save that there and we go back. So the next steps here are based around when someone's booked in and they've got their sales call and they have had the sales call, right? So this is when the coach logs into Go High Level um, or me app.knockonautomation.com and the person sitting here and booked and now there needs to need, need things need to happen after that after they've had the sales call so a pretty common one is they they close the deal or they've not made the sale now depending on what payment processor the person is using depending on what kind of back end they already have you can have uh, this closed deal be triggered by payments going through their payment processor. Uh, it's just not as easy. It's it's kind of redundant when like you want people to manually update notes and whatever. So just say for Matt Lamborn here, you want to go notes and then you add in huh, closed deal. Woo. Um, starting on the 22nd of org. Cool. 
uh, payment made, right? So you, they've added in the notes. It is very easy for the salesperson just to move them across, right? Now, what that does for a lot of uh, my clients, when I've moved them into closed deal, it will start their onboarding. So if they have a welcome pack, if they have a form to fill out for their preferences, training preferences, food preferences, all of that kind of stuff, contracts, especially especially contracts, uh, this will then trigger from that. So cap most of them capture the payment on the phone and then when moved into closed deal, they will be sent the contract and when the con contract's then signed out, it will send off the other stuff. So that will then... Uh, kick off the next automation for this. So most of the time, the automation sequence looks like this for a closed deal. Now, it's probably going to be a little bit light on for what I show you in the next, um, in this in this example, because every kind of coach is different. So we're going to go opportunity status change. So the opportunity status moved and we're going to add filter and the filter is in pipeline sales pipeline and add filter because you have multiple filters to filter through filter through multiple conditions uh, moved uh, the pipeline stage is uh, closed deal <laughs> I forgot what we were doing there for a second press se oh I looked at the did the wrong one one second I always make this mistake so it, instead of opportunity status change it's pipeline ch stage change there you go so pipeline stage changed in the pipeline, sales pipeline, and then our uh, our pipeline stage is uh, closed deal, save, and then we're going to add the action here, which is going to be first and foremost, uh, we're going to wait. So when they move it straight across, we want this to feel human and make it feel generic. So we wait five minutes after, and then we're going to send an SMS. And then we're going to say, yo, Matt here just um, wanted to say awesome to have you on board. Keen to get some amazing results. Here's the link to your contract. Let me, me know when you fill it out. Now, that link to the contract could be hosted inside Go High Level. Uh, that link to the contract could also be an external platform. So what you would need to do here, if it's uh, inside Go High Level, I would set up reminders in here. So I would wait a day and then send them a message, be like, hey, have you filled out the, um, the, the contract? And if they say no, obviously, then you can ask them why not. But I would have multiple uh, daily reminders for them. And then on like the third or fourth day, uh, more like the fifth or sixth, I would say, hey, are you still interested in coaching? So that's where you've got it. You've got the payment commitment up front. So usually it doesn't matter and they will sign the contract or the client agreement pretty quickly. But it's just um, case by case. And this one we're going to call close deal sent contract. Cool. So we're going to save that. Now we would have a secondary uh, automation if our contract was hosted inside go high level so you can set up contracts inside go high level if you don't know how to do that um it's pretty easy and i'm going to show you right now <laughs> so <laughs> you will need your um what's it called you will need your contract and you will need a form so we're going to go in form builder and the way that i do this i host the contract itself inside a, another funnel so it's usually that abbreviated funnel. So the calendar funnel also has the contract in it. So it would look something like this. So what we're going to do is going to add form element on the left-hand side. And we are going to find the signature form element. If this lets me, it's not going to let me search. Where is it gone? May not be here. Might be in my custom fields. Sig. Nope. I've lost it. Might have to refresh this and make sure that it's... They haven't taken away from me because they've taken away from me. I'm in trouble. I don't think they have though. Add form element. Is it... Is it right in front of me and I'm missing it? 
or maybe I've created it myself. Add custom field. Uh, oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> custom field, signature. And we're going to press next. And it's going to be called signature. So a custom field is just a field that you've created. doesn't come default in Goha level. So signature is going to be stored in here. So the name is signature. The object is contact. And the group that it is stored in is contact. Uh, additional preferences, that's fine. We can leave that. So we're just going to press save. Now, this sometimes takes a second to find it. So signature, we can bring that into here. And that is a physical thing that they can sign with their finger. So once we have that, we have our button here. It's just going to be submit. Cool. I'm just going to keep it ugly for the time being. Let's go. So we're going to rename the form to signature form. My neighbor is picking up his dog poo. Very good. Signature form. Cool. Save. And we are just going to check. Go high, not go high level. OBS is still recording. It is fantastic. Cool. We're going to go back. Now, we're going to create a web page for this to be hosted on. Now, this isn't something that you would publicly have uh, available. However, it would come very handy because you can just send people your your link to fill out a contract if they don't get it. So we go into sites and then we're going to go into funnels. I know this is rapid fire, but hopefully you can go back and, and watch these if need be. So name for page is sign, uh, signature, oops, signature page contract. Cool. Save. Create funnel step. Wazzy woo. Oh, not use existing. We're going to create from blank. Now let's do some cheeky chat GPT. Write me an example fitness contract for 12 weeks. This isn't legal information. Please don't take this as gospel. Whilst that's generating, we're going to go back in here. We're back on our page to... Uh, create the funnel. So we're going to have full width for the first one. Actually, we might change that. We might not make it full width. We'll go add section and we'll go medium. So it keeps it in the middle. We're going to go plus in the middle, press one on the one column. And then headline is going to be fitness contract. I always like to call them client agreements because in them, usually coaches will have their like terms and conditions like if they're doing in-person training like 45 minutes beforehand, you can't cancel or you get billed or all those kind of things. So um, I like to have it in there. So we got as an, as an agreement. It's like we're going to do this together. You're going to show up and it's all going to be hunky-dory. So in parag I've just added a paragraph here that gives me some examples. So we've got our contract here that was just very nicely created by ChatGPT. Now let's paste this and we're going to change it to blocked across to the side. Cool. This is just an example, so it doesn't really matter too much, but acknowledgement and agreement. And we'll delete this here. And then at the bottom here, we're going to add a, a full width. It doesn't really matter because it's only going to be in the middle. One column. And then we're going to add our form that we created before, right? Already, this is looking gas. So... One thing I just realized is that in the signature form, we're going to need to capture full name as well. So you need to have full name and signature or else you won't know who signed it. It's just be a random person. It will store as a random thing. So you need their full name, signature, and it's ready to go. And you can put their logo at the top up here as well. So if we say, just create another one columnar and put this up here and then add element, add image, and you have their logo. Looks great. See, this is great. So now someone's starting to get their whole ecosystem by doing this kind of setup. This is the power of go high level, by the way. If you're a fitness coach looking at this and you're like, how the hell do I set it all up? Like put the effort in and, and get it set up because you don't want to enter what's called tech fatigue or sorry, not tech fatigue. Um, oh, tech creep rather where, where you've have all these technologies and all these platforms and you're not using them to the full extent. Um, Oh, no, tech debt is the word I'm looking for, or the phrase. It's when you're entering all, all these platforms and you don't have them set up correctly. Don't do it. Cool. <laughs> so once we have our signature page, that's fantastic. We'll have an automation here. 
that will um, bit, exit this, ignore this, create workflow, wazi woo. So what this workflow is going to be is when they've signed the uh, signature, onboarding. So they've signed the signature and it's going to onboard them, right? So add new workflow trigger. So form is submitted because it's still a form even though it's a signature form. And the form is the signature form, save trigger. We're going to say message, oh, sorry, uh, SMS. Yo, congrats on getting onboarded. Oops, just spelt it wrong, but that's fine. Then we're going to send, I usually send an email with this as well because emails are more formal than a text message. Um, <laughs> write a quick welcome email for the above. Cool. So there we go. So it's going to quickly do it. So in this onboarding, it's going to write the welcome email. And in that welcome email, you'll have links to your training platform. If you have a training application like Trainerize, for example, this is where you would uh, get them onboarded to Trainerize. So welcome. You're going to get account on TZ soon. All right. So obviously it's going to be more formal, but what you would then do, uh, welcome. Cool. Oops. Oh, go away. Save action. Save. So what you would then do is you would want to start their onboarding on Zapier or a, a different uh, a different platform that can actually interact with the Trainerize API. So you would set up a webhook and you would go for there. If you don't know how to set up webhooks, I've actually got a course on setting up a fitness account. Sorry, fit, fitness automations. I explained webhooks in it. It's in my bio. I haven't put that one in my bio in a while, but feel free to go. It's free. Uh, go do the thing. <laughs> you'll, you'll learn how to do it. Um, cool. So signature onboarding, that's done, right? So now we go back and we have pretty much the whole CRM build. Now, if they, the next step, no sale. Oh no. Okay. So, I love this next automation. It is so simple yet so effective and it gets my clients deals that they otherwise would have missed. So for number five, we are going to go to number five, uh, missed sale automation. <laughs> cool. So if we go into stage, pipeline stage has changed, add filter. In pipeline, sales pipeline, and the stage is no sale. We're going to wait a day. Wait one days. And we're going to send an SMS. And we are going to ask them. Hey, contact full name. Or, yeah, con we'll go contact first name. Don't want to be too formal. Hey, contact first name. I know you meant you said, I know you didn't sign up yesterday. I'm always on the hunt for feedback. Was the reason you said no because of the cost or was it something else? Cool. Super simple automation. And then you just have follow-ups for that one, right? This gives them the opportunity to say, oh, it was the cost. I just can't afford that much right now. You can then counter and have a downsell and be like, cool. If it's if it was $100 cheaper, would you have said yes? And if they say yes, then you'd be like, oh, great. I can actually commit to that. Let's get you started. Because I really want to help people, right? Miss sale automation, please have it in. It costs you nothing to have this in your business. Please do it, <laughs> please. And then if they signed up and they replied or whatever, you would take them out of that automation. Cool. High value content offerings. I hope this video is not going to be too long. Oh, it's 40 minutes already. <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> All right. High value content automation. So <laughs> automation offering. If you post content online, you should have a free lead magnet. 
Hormozzi just released $100 million leads. If you haven't read it already, read that and then you'll understand why I'm saying this. It doesn't need to be complicated. It needs to be very, very simple. So in funnels, we're going to create a new funnel. Now, this is going to be super quick and super basic. It's going to look super dry um, and it doesn't matter because you're going to understand the concept, not the perfection. Don't get stuck in perfection. Whilst this is loading, I'm just going to give you a bit of life motivation for a second. I'm going to make this bigger too so you can see me. Don't get stuck in perfection. Uh, it is so much easier. If your offer, if your lead magnet is good, people will download um, They will download your uh, resource, whatever it is. I am an example of this. Multiple years ago, when I first started online coaching, I had a ebook that I showed my journey of losing 40 kilos. I had a crappy landing page and I had a give me your phone number, email and whatever because I went to a, a business mentoring uh, event and they told me to get MailChimp and create a resource and then post content and I will get leads. In, in one video that blew up on TikTok, I got 500, I think, 500 contact details within my first week, which was an, a complete anomaly, but it has the power to do it and it doesn't need to be anything insane. So this is loaded now. <laughs> but let's get back into it. HVCO, make it quick and dirty. doesn't matter. So name for page is home, path is home. Cool. Create funnel step. And we can even um, press create from blank and go from here. So, right. So all we're going to need is a way to capture the leads, uh, your logo and a, a background, right? and a description on what the actual thing is. So full width at the top is gonna to be our logo, right? So keep the logo theme going at the top, consistency, bada bing, bada boom. This is a bit big, so we're gonna just call, set it to 300, right? On the left-hand side here, image options width 300. 300 seems to be my number for a lot of things, so I just use that there. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna create another big container, because I told you we wanna keep it uh, nice and, and sectioned off when we're doing funnels. We're going to create full width and we're going to add row. We're going to go two columns. So it's going to give us two things, right? This is where you get creative and you jump on, If say if you created an ebook or you've created a calculator, you jump on Canva and you create a little image of, of what your thing is. So if it's a six-week free program, right? Write that, make it a little bit creative, put your logo in it and then put the phone like the iPhone border around it from Canva. You can do it without a paid Canva account. It's free. You, you, that's, that's all you need to do. So image and put your image here. That'll be your, let me, let me show you one. I'll show you one of what I, <laughs> me and uh, a business I've done. This is one of my clients. Um, he hopefully won't mind me showing you this at all. Um, <laughs> it's free publicity for him. So you've got the thing at the top. You've got the, um, the image here. It's very simple. It's just screenshots from the actual ebook and it's got a little bit of information about what you need to put in on the side. Then you have a download button that opens up a lead form. Boom. This is fantastic. We love this, right? So here you would have a title, a headline here, and then below it, you would have a sub headline. And then if you wanted to put in some paragraph um, bullet points, whoops, you would do this. And then below it, you would put in a button. That's it, right? And then when you have, you can either click to have this, click to sign up or click to download or whatever. If you click on that button on the left-hand side here, if you go, go down to text options, you can change this to submit. And then the button action is what happens when someone clicks that button. So it, most of the time I'll do open pop-up, um, which it's exactly what it sounds like. If they press submit, it's going to click open pop-up. You can do a heap of things here, but it's going to open up this. So this is our pop-up. I clicked it on the top left-hand corner here. We're going to click add row and we're going to go add element. It's the same thing. And we go form and we don't have any forms for this one yet. Actually, uh, no, you need to create another one. So, so what we're going to do, we're going to save this for a second. We're going to open up app.knockonautomation.com. Actually, no, we're going to copy this, open a new tab. Oops. That's our contract. We can get out of that. No worries. Wait for this to load. Cool. We're going to go back. Have a swig. 
And this is a long one, guys. This might be my longest ever YouTube video. But I'm still recording. Yeah, fantastic. All right, it's loading. Come on. Might even be able to go back from here quicker. Yeah, we can. Let's go. Let's go. You need a separate form because you don't want your HVCO leads and your inquired leads to get confused. Because when someone fills out the HVCO, we want them to actually get that content offering from you without um, getting mixed up with everything else. So we're going to add a form, start from scratch, crack my neck. And we are going to call this one straight off the bat in options over here. HVCO1 Cal Calculator. Calorie Calculator, right? It's just calorie calculator. It's fine. Cool. So full name. And we're going to go phone number. And email. And button. And submit. Cool. Save. With, it's it's so simple. <laughs> Don't get bogged down in this stuff. It's so quick and so easy to do this. Uh, we're going to refresh this page because it's going to be the, the page that we want. I might put together a pack. You might be able to download everything from this video in the description. The snapshot. I'll create a snapshot of it. Um, yeah. It'll be a good one. Out the wazzy woo. All right. Funnels. It's taken too long. I'm moving quick, you know, moving quick. Yeah, in the video, in the description below, I will include the snapshot, the fitness course, the um, maybe even the calorie calculator. I have a calorie calculator that you can add in. <laughs> I'll find it and, and you can have the whole shebang. Go nuts. All right, sweet. Open this back up. Wait for it to load. My dogs are barking. They want to go for a walk. They said, Matt, what's going on? You've been up there for an hour. I said, yeah, I know. I'm, the people need me. The automation gods need me. Why is this taking so long to load? I've been kicked out. All right. I'm going to pause and I'll come back in a second. I can't even pause and, and keep going because it'll end the recording and I don't want to do that. Turn off. Ha <laughs> ha. Look, it's me. I feel like I'm a, I'm a streamer. I'm, I'm doing all the things streamers do to hide their screen whilst they're, they're busy. I'm back. All right. It won't be too long. Do I have a, a shiner on my face from jujitsu? I think I do. There you go. All right. So whilst I log myself back in, please bear with me. It's just chilling. We, we love go high level, but sometimes it can be frustrating out the wazzy woo. All right. That might, might, I might have to wrap it up. But I'll walk through just quickly what I would do in this situation. I would put that form in the pop-up and then I would create an automation to send the email with the actual uh, calorie calculator or whatever. Uh, so I'll actually open up the calorie calculator and I'll show you. Ah, I found it. I might have got this from Hormozy. Might have, might have not. So this is just one of my clients. Hopefully he doesn't mind. But you can go through and put all the details in here and it will spit out their macronutrients, all that kind of stuff. Very, very good calculator for you to give to your clients. So I hope you found this valuable. Sorry, I got cut off. Uh, these things happen when you're doing videos um, and it's 50 minutes anyway. So uh, have a great day. If you want all of that stuff that I just spoke about, uh, you can download it in the uh, description below. But 